Our 10-year-old son, Aaron, asked us the other day to buy him a 9910 model Nerf gun. If you ever seen one of those, they're pretty formidable. And we immediately refused, saying that the three Nerf guns he already had were enough. But Aaron reminded us that we'd promised to the gun to him a couple of weeks earlier if he cleaned up his room, as he had. As usual, Aaron was right. Like most kids, Aaron is an excellent debater when his interests are at stake. <clears throat> and he's devilishly quick at pouncing on his parents' contradiction. It sometimes seems as if half of Aaron's sentences begin, but you said. <clears throat> Not that Aaron's argumentative skills are very advanced. He seems only recently to have reached the developmental stage of realizing that other minds see the world differently from his and, and that when he's asked why he likes something, because I like it, is not a helpful answer. But Aaron makes up in persistence for what he lacks in conceptual sophistication. There are a few propositions that Aaron won't fiercely contest, whether it's that he should take a bath or that he's watching too much TV. <clears throat> but then, how could Aaron and other children not learn to argue at very early ages, seeing that making arguments <clears throat> is one of the few means they have <clears throat> of getting their needs met in a world where older and bigger people call most of the shots? And making arguments is a step up in effectiveness from throwing a tantrum, at least I hope so, <clears throat> For this reason, you might think Aaron's school would be tapping into his argumentative skills as a means of drawing Aaron into his academic task. But it isn't. It isn't doing that. Our, Aaron's curriculum is focused mostly on learning information and concepts with little invitation to build on, those, on his argument skills or enter into debates. If anything, Aaron's curriculum is already teaching him that a penchant for arguing is something troublemakers have, and that he needs to check at the classroom door. <clears throat> I suspect that if we looked at high school students who are failing in school and who will soon drop out, we would find that many of those students who are apathetic in their classrooms are smart and articulate arguers in the schoolyard and the playground. In some cases, they may be smarter and more articulate than their classmates who are getting better grades. Yet these students too, uh, these uh, struggling students or failing students have got the message that arguing and debating, things that they're good at, have nothing to do with doing well in school. Now of course, educators could be forgiven if they worry that arguing and debating are dangerously close to fighting and bullying, things that many boys and some girls are already all too prone to do. This way of thinking is certainly understandable in the wake of the Columbine and Sandy Hook massacres and other, other similar shooting events and other forms of school violence. Even so, it seems that we educators are missing a great opportunity if we keep the curriculum free of argument and debate, including, for example, <clears throat> the argument, the, the opportunity to induce violent prone students to channel their aggressive impulses from fighting with fists, guns, and slurs to fighting with words and ideas. Argument is one of the few academically relevant practices that students already have some experience with, and yet we educators have done little to exploit that fact, take advantage of it. For these reasons, the new Common Core standards seem very promising to me since they present argument, very rightly in my view, as the most important skill for, quote, college and career readiness, central criterion in the Common Core. And they mandate that students should demonstrate argument skills at appropriate levels all the way from pre-K and kindergarten to the senior year in high school. 